Hi, my name is Bart Polson, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to prepare a data form in Excel to uh, get data ready to import into SPSS, the statistics program. It's actually now known as PASW for predictive analytics software. Um, I find it much easier to enter data into uh, Excel than into SPSS for a number of reasons. One is you can uh, put in notes about how to enter things, you can temporarily have numbers and words in the same variable and well I'll show you. Uh, right here I have a questionnaire that I made the other day. I have a YouTube thing about it. I'm calling it study on attitudes about college and here are the questions that are on it. I have right here age, uh, gender, uh, right here I have relationship status and please note it's, an, it's a blank line because I'm doing a questionnaire it's very easy to do open-ended. I give a few examples so people get an idea for the range in addition to the standard you know single and married. Oh, while I'm at it whenever you do age just put a blank line unless you have to use a small number of categories which is rarely true for my research. And then I have three questions here that people answer on a rating scale from zero uh, they don't agree with it at all. Up to 10, they agree with it you know, extremely or completely. And uh, I'm going to show how to enter just these questions right here. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is going to go to Excel. Now, anytime you enter data in Excel, uh, you need to remember to put ID numbers on your questionnaires. Uh, I just get out a pen and I write them in the top right corner as I enter them. That way, if something gets entered funny, you can go back and you can find it later. It's, a, it's extremely useful. By the way, if you have several people entering data and they're entering it separately, uh, it's a very easy thing that the first person, uh, you use three digit numbers. The first person starts with 101, 102, 103. The second person starts with 201. The third person starts with 301. It's okay to have gaps in the numbering as long as you don't have any numbers appearing more than once. Um, and I find it better to use numbers than like your name and a number because uh, it keeps it as a straight numerical variable. Anyhow, you always want to put in an ID number. Okay, that's always the first thing. Oh, by the way, um, a moment ago, if you click on this little diamond, you can highlight the whole uh, spreadsheet. And by default, it comes out on the left. I like to have it centered uh, for most variables except text ones. Anyhow, so that's what I did there. Uh, and I like to have the variable names in bold. It doesn't matter. It's, it's just nice. Anyhow, there's the ID number. Um, and you always put that first. You're going to write that on top. Now, let me go back to this questionnaire. If I were doing an experiment and I had two different conditions and people responded to these, uh, then I would include a variable about experimentation, but it works the same way as gender. Anyhow, let me just show these ones. How old are you? Well, that one we should just call age, right? That's easy. And you just stick in the number. Uh, by the way, if somebody didn't answer the question, you just leave it blank. You shoot right over it. Now, gender, I do a little differently than other people. It's very common to call the variable gender. However, when you're reading a correlation matrix or a um, regression output, and the variable says, you know, correlation of gender and this is 0.3, you have to remember how you coded gender. Um, now, a very simple way to take care of this is to make it a 0, 1 variable and to call the variable by whatever the 1 is. Um, Let's, and it's arbitrary, you can make uh, men the one and women the zero, or women the one and men the zero. I just do whichever group I think is going to have higher scores on what I'm looking at because positive coefficients are generally easier to interpret. Let's assume for a moment that women would generally have positive, more positive attitudes about college than men would. I, you know, I don't really know if that's true. But what I would do is I would come up here and I would call this variable female not gender, I would call it female. Um, and then I could make a note about it. I could even say female equals one. And then I'm going to do a little trick. You can actually enter a hard return inside a cell. Uh, I think on a PC it's control return. On my Mac it's control command return. But I do that and then I can put this little note, you know, so I can enter both of these. You see it's in one cell. So the people who are entering the data know that if they're female, they put a one, if they're male, they put a zero. All right, the next question is relationship status. Now that's a tricky one. Um, relationship, I'm gonna call the variable that, but because there's a couple of really common responses, I'll put single equals one, and married 
equals two. By the way, I'm not trying to get metaphorical here. It's just those are the order in which they come most often. And then I could make this one other, um, write it out for anything else. I'll show you how that works. Make that just a little bit bigger. And then I have three variables right here. One, two, three, they're all on the rating scale. Now, please notice I have them numbered. I do that because it makes entering data really easy, uh, especially because you can do this thing in Excel. I like to put Q for a question, and then I put a leading zero, zero, one. If you're going to have more than nine questions, you want to have the leading zeros so the questions sort correctly uh, in other programs. Now, here's the trick, Q, zero, two. If you enter two of them, Excel can pick up on the pattern. You enter two, you highlight them, and you can just drag it over, and you see it goes to 03. It can actually go much higher than that, you know. There's 021, or question 21, but I don't need that many. So I have my three questions here. Please note, I just propagated that. I'm not labeling them by their names. I'm just doing this because it's easier to enter the data this way. And so let's say, for instance, I have my questionnaire and somebody's filled it out, and they're the first person, so they're uh, number one. Now let's say they didn't enter their age. That's fine. What I do is I just hit tab and I go straight over it. Don't put a zero, don't put a dot, don't put anything. Just go right over it if they didn't answer it. But let's say they indicated that they're uh, a woman, so they get a one on that one. And let's say that they are uh, divorced. Now, I have codes already for single and for married, but I don't for divorced. So what I do now is I write this, divorced. And then later, if I get a lot of a particular category, I can go back and say that divorce is three, cohabitating is four, and so on. But for right now, I can just leave it like that. And then let's say I have... Uh, I like college, I like my classes. Let's say this person's generally positive, so we get a seven and a nine. Uh, I don't get enough sleep. Eh, for some miracle, let's say that's not a problem. They get a two. Ta-da, we're done. We have an ID number. We have age. This person didn't provide age, my hypothetical person, so I skipped over it. They're female, they're divorced, and these are their answers for the three rating scale questions. And now what you do is you save it, and I will show in another one how to import the data into SPSS. It's really simple, but the Excel spreadsheet does require a little bit of cleanup, and so I hope that helps for now.